Hi everyone! So welcome along to the channel. This is going to be the who, when, what, no, who, when, why, what and how PhD confirmation examination process 101. Um, so if you're new, thank you for clicking on this video. Um, if you're returning, it's great to have you back. I'm Caroline, I'm a UK based physics lecturer. So I work at a UK university and I research and teach in physics. And next week I'm going to be involved in confirmation examinations. So this is something I've done for a number of years, is examining PhD students at a particular point in their career and their academic journey. And in this video I'm going to use those questions to try to help explain this process. Process. So let's kick off with the who. Well, the who is quite straightforward. It's essentially our first year PhD students. So that's the person that's going to be taking the examination. Um, and the other bit, I guess, is the examiners, and they are going to be members of the faculty academic staff. So they will be lecturers and professors within the faculty. And occasionally you might get an external person if you, if you need that kind of input for the examination. So that's the who. The when. Well, this exam tends to happen after about 12 months. So it varies from university to university. They all have their different timeframes. But the one I'm at in the UK, about the 12 month mark, that's when you're going to be taking your confirmation exam if you are a first year PhD student. So that's the who, that's the when. So let's tackle the big one now, the, the why. Well, it's a really good point to reflect on their first 12 months of research and then to look ahead at what's coming up in their PhD to help make sure their PhD journey is going to go well. And why are they doing this? So the examining team are looking for several things. First of all, they're looking to make sure the PhD student has had a good first year. You know, they've been able to do some measurements, understand some new techniques, explore some initial ideas, conduct some literature surveys relevant to their particular area. But then the examining team also want to make sure that the student has a plan for the next two, maybe three years of their PhD journey, that what they're planning to do is going to lead to novel original work that can form the research basis of a final PhD dissertation. And importantly, the examining team also need to check that what the student is proposing to do is realistic. You know, it's no good planning to do all these wonderful measurements and then not being able to get the particular bit of equipment that you need in order to facilitate them to make it actually happen. So, as I said, it's not an exam that's conducted by the supervisor. So the PhD student will have two supervisors, um, a main supervisor and a secondary supervisor. And one of those will be present in the room, or at least that's what happens at my university, one of them is present in the room, but they say nothing. So I guess it's a little bit strange, but they sit to one side of the room typically and they don't make any comment throughout the process. And then the examining team will be other faculty members of staff. Um, and they're chosen by the supervisor in order to ensure that the PhD student who's going through the process gets a good discussion about their work. Um, so I guess that's the, the why, that's why it happens. Um, so what? actually happens then. So the student will go to a typically a room, but these days it's all happening virtually. But they'll go to a room, they'll have their report, the examining team will be there, supervisor in the corner, and they will have this maybe one to two hour conversation. And it will be going through the literature review, you know, making sure they can understand the sources that the student's been researching or critiquing from. It'll explore any experimental or modelling methods. It'll look at any results that have come up from the first year. You know, it might challenge the, the problems or issues or maybe the difficulties that the student experienced in getting those results. Then it'll look ahead, um, the plan for the next couple of years. Um, importantly, it'll also use, um, importantly, it also gives a chance for the student to share where they plan to show their research. So, you know, research is great, but it needs to be shared with the wider public. Um, so the student will be able to talk about where they want to show their research, which conferences they're planning to go to, maybe which events they've already been to, which are the journals they're targeting to try to publish their research in. Uh, another key part is looking at the personal development of the PhD student. So have they just been focused working all the time on their PhD or have they been able to get involved in the wider PhD community? Have they had some kind of skills training? Have they been to any wider forums designed for PhD students? So all of that comes into the conversation. Um, so I guess that's kind of the, the, the what, I guess, a little bit. And then this kind of how it all finishes at the end. 
So then what will happen is the examining team will ask the PhD student um, if they want to add anything else, so any questions. Then the supervisor will leave the room, um, which gives a chance, I guess, for the examining team to ask the PhD student any separate questions they might want to have and answer without the supervisor being present. Then the student will leave the room um, and then you get probably a 10, 15 minute period where the examining team discuss the conversation um, and they have usually a report to fill out um, and then the student will be invited back in and the supervisor will come back in and everybody will hear the outcome of that oral exam. Um, and the outcome can be that the student is through um, and there's no need to do any corrections on the report and everything's fine and they progress straight to the second and third year. Um, sometimes the student will be asked to do minor corrections on their report, so maybe just expand an area or elaborate their thinking on a particular topic. Sometimes the student will be asked to present their work again, so they'll be asked to actually maybe reshape significant parts of their report and that will need to be handed in and quite often that might be accompanied then with an extra oral conversation just to make sure that those parts of the report that needed reshaping kind of work themselves through correctly. And very occasionally, sometimes it will be a case of, well, actually, this PhD maybe isn't going in a direction that's going to lead to a successful PhD outcome. And so then the supervisory and the kind of the academic team will get together and they'll discuss, is it best to maybe change the focus of the PhD? Or maybe is it best for the student to not go for the PhD, but maybe go for a master's qualification? Um, so, yeah, lots of different outcomes. But the main thing, I guess, to take away from it is it's meant to be a helpful process. If you're going through yours right now, all the best if you're the student. Um, if you're part of the examining team, I hope the conversation is a productive and smooth one. Um, but have a great few days. I'll be back on Thursday. So if you're new, I post every Monday and Thursday. We're approaching the midpoint in the month. So um, I'll start to flag up that at the end of the month, I am doing another lecturer question and answer. So if you do have questions, add them in the comments. You know, if there's something you want to know about university life or what it's like to be an academic, just pop it in the comments and I can start to collect some of them for our November Q&A. But stay safe, have a good start to the week, look after yourselves, like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.